So if they can control the MS, the mainstream media, control the education system, control the political world, and allow no opposing view to be expressed, then what you do is you make people afraid of this approaching catastrophe, so they submit to the emerging global government. Uh, in my latest uh, Light for the Last Days, if I can find it, in, on page four, I wrote about uh, some of the ways this is happening. One of the leading lights in the program is a man called Klaus Schwab, who is the leader of the World Economic Forum. I've written about him in some of the previous editions of Light for Last Days. Uh, he's working on something called the Great Reset, opposed, proposed by the World Economic Forum. Brings together leaders of government, industry, media, and education to work out some kind of solution to global problems. Uh, he says this will only come about through some form of effective global governance. Effective global governance. That thrill your heart? says it will create a new social contract that honors the dignity of every human being. In other words, his, new, his global reset is an updated blueprint for the, the, the uh, new world order. He also made the connection between the COVID crisis and the Green New Deal. He said, at first glance, the pandemic and the environment might seem to be only distantly related cousins, but they're much closer and more intertwined than you think. So one of the connections is they both make people afraid of what's coming, unless you do what the government tells you to do. Unless you take the vaccine, you take the, get the vaccine pass, unless you do all the things you're told to do. Otherwise, you're doomed, basically. Uh, something's going to destroy your lives unless you do what you're told. And ultimately, many people, including myself, see dangers in what they're telling us to do both to your health and both to the future of the human race. And that it could actually cause a reduced uh, human population and cause us to ultimately to be submitted to the dictates of a very powerful group of people who call themselves the New World Order, or they don't call themselves that, something we call them that, uh, but they are working for this kind of global government effectiveness thing, which will be backed by technology, taking control of our homes, our money, our thoughts, our social lives, and what we can do. There's a few quotations to say this is something which they've been working on for some time. 1993, there was a Club of Rome report, which is a group of highly powerful uh, globalists, uh, said, called the First Global Revolution, said, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, Water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, and thus the real enemy is humanity itself. Humanity requires a common motivation, namely a common adversary, in order to realize world government. It doesn't matter if this common enemy is a real one or one invented for the purpose. It's a bit of a strange statement, isn't it? It doesn't matter if this is a real one or one invented for the purpose, but the purpose is to get everyone together on board for a coming world government. A man called John Holdren, he was actually one of Obama's sort of uh, science czars and chiefs of advisors. He said, a trans transnational planetary regime should assume control of the global economy and also dictate the most intimate details of Americans' lives using an armed international police force. So that's really with excitement. A man called Daniel Botkin, so the only way to get our society to change, for, truly change, is to frighten people with the possibility of a catastrophe. And young people have been told that their future is at stake, and so many have joined environmental activist groups wanting governments to bring in the Green New Diet deal right now in order to save the world. Motivated a lot by the fear of the future and uh, unaware in some ways that they're foot soldiers for very wealthy power brokers who want to impose a new form of tyranny on the world. A lady called Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in America, youngest person ever to enter the US, uh, in the US Congress, said the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Uh, Greta Thunberg told world leaders in 2009, how dare you? You've stolen my dreams and my childhood. And 
if you listen to what they're saying on the demos, which they're conducting even now in London and uh, Glasgow and around the world, basically what they want is actually is to move pretty quickly or even now to, to zero carbon burning now. Uh, if they do that, that would involve shutting down our society, banning cars and planes, closing power stations, bringing a radical change to agriculture, industry and transport, which would soon lead to no food, no jobs, no money, and freezing to death in the winter. And even the partial changes which they're proposing will lead to reduction in the ability to travel and an increase in poverty and joblessness, shortages of energy, food, and causing big price rises. And the costly dream measures will ultimately lead to the economic decline or fall of Western nations and an increase in poverty also in the developing world. There's actually a religious appeal to all of this as well. And you need to realize that it's not just on the political level, it's working also on the spiritual level, if you like, on the religious level. There's a man called Desmond Berghofer. He says basically the answer is a one world creation-based religion. Quote, the supreme motivating concept of the future is synergy. Men and women of all nations coming together under leaders of great vision who see the pursuit of a common ideal, one world, one earth, one people, is the reason for all existence. Robert Muller, former United Nations high official, told young people in attendance at a global citizenship congress in Canada, you are not children, children of Canada, you're really living units of the cosmos because the earth is a cosmic phenomenon. We're all cosmic units. This is why, this is why religions tell you you are divine. We are divine energy. It is in your hands whether evolution on this planet continues or not. We need to tremendously strengthen the United Nations or establish a world federation or develop regional continental units and then unite them to create a form of world union. You can be caretakers and saviors of the world. Everybody remember your mother earth. Okay, so you can be saviors of the world because you have this divine energy within you. You've got to unite all that divine energy within you to make this one world religious system. You're not citizens of the United Kingdom or wherever you live. You're citizens of the world and therefore you have to come together and discover your own godhood that really God dwells within you as you and that if you cover your godhood, then you can bring everything together into the one world system. Does that sound like what the God Bible says? The Bible actually warns against a one world religion and a one world government. It equates it with Antichrist, beast and the false prophet, and the woman riding the beast of Revelation chapter 17. The Bible tells you you're not divine. Uh, you and I are sinners under the judgment of God until we repent and believe the gospel. We're not saviors of the world for sure, uh, but someone, people who need a savior to redeem us, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can turn from being sinners saved by grace, we can become sinners saved by grace and born again into the kingdom of God through repentance and faith in Jesus. So let me ask you, are you a good global citizen? Are you someone in tune with the planet? Are you an activist working for a one world global solidarity? A united humanity in a sacred quest to save Mother Earth? If not, are you out of tune with it? Are you going to find your oneness through yoga, through New Age mysticism, some kind of earth based uh, green religion, which is actually a form of witchcraft? Because if you try to find the God within you, you're not going to find God, you're going to find the devil because the devil is quite capable of appearing as an angel of light to transform himself into an angel of light to deceive people into accepting what the spiritual experience he gives us coming from God or actually comes from Satan. And I've seen many people I've talked to who've had that kind of experience and yet who are not in the hands of God, they're in the grip of Satan and of demon powers. And actually you're opening yourself up if you look for God within you because Paul says, I know in my flesh there dwells no good thing. In my flesh, there is a sinful human nature. God doesn't come from within me. He comes from outside of me in the person of Jesus, who I invite into my life by repentance and faith in Jesus the Messiah. And if you look for the God within you, it's actually the devil who's posing as an angel of light, offering the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but barring the way to the tree of life 
through faith in Jesus, who died on the tree, on the cross, in order to save us. And these people are talking about the world being a fi in a fix and needing to save the problems and to call for some kind of world unity, world understanding, to come together. To build back better, the phrase which Boris keeps using, which he's got from the World Economic Forum, uh, as their phrase to rebuild the world after COVID. And as you look at this, it's actually part of a different spirit. In fact, as nations and cultures clash, and as you hear of wars and rumors of wars, there's an observable movement that says we need a one-world solution. 